Om Agyan Timirandasya Gnajana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yenatas My Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stapditam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swam Padantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvasesa Sunyavari Pastyatyade Satarine Pancha Kalpa Tarubhisya Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namahona Maha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasati Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I don't have a topic because I wasn't planning on giving class, but if someone would like to give a topic, I would be happy to try to explain it. <laughs> Any requests for topics out there? Or should we just do Bhagavad Gita? Is there anybody alive out there? <laughs> if you are, raise your hand. If you're not, just don't. <laughs> okay, okay. There is some life there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Anything? Should we just do Gita? On Sunday, there's three, three holy day, three. Um, I'm not sure appearance days. I think of great souls coming up, but I'm not prepared for that. So we'll just do Gita. What what verse are we on? Oh, that's a good one. Good. Thank you. They're all good. But some are better. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Mogash Mogaisa Karman Ho Moga Jnana Vicheta Saha Rakshasim Masurim Jaiva Prakritim Mohinim Sritaha Mogasya Moga Karmano Moga Jnana Vicheta Saha Rakshasim Asurim Jaiva Prakritim Mohinim Sritaha Mogasya Moga Karmano Moga Jnana Vicheta Saha Raksasim Asurim Jaiva Prakritim Mohinim Sritaha
Any ladies? <laughs> Moga Asa, ba baffled in their hopes, Moga Karmanaha, baffled in fruit of activities, Moga Jnana, baffled in knowledge, Vichaita Saha, bewildered, Rakshasim, demonic, Asurim, atheistic, Cha and Eva, certainly, Prakritim, nature, Mohinim, bewildering, Sritaha, taking shelter of. So this really, this describes those who are outside of Krishna consciousness. Those who are thus bewildered are attracted by demonic, demonic and atheistic views. In that deluded condition, their hopes for liberation, their fruit of activities, and their culture of knowledge are all defeated. Purport. There are many devotees who assume themselves to be in Krishna conscious and devotional service, but at heart do not accept the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna as the Absolute Truth. For them, the fruit of devotional service going back home will never be tasted. Similarly, those who are engaged in fruit of pious activities, who are ultimately hoping to be liberated from this material entanglement, will never be successful either because they deride the personality of Godhead Krishna. In other words, persons who mock Krishna are to be understood to be demonic or atheistic. In the seventh chapter of Gita, as described, such demonic miscreants never surrender to Krishna. That their mental speculations to arrive at the absolute truth bring them to the false conclusions that the ordinary living entity and Krishna are one and the same. With such a false conviction, they think that the body of any human being is now simply covered by material nature and that as soon as one is liberated from this material body, there is no difference between God and himself. This attempt to become one with Krishna will be baffled because of delusion. Such atheistic and demoniac cultivation of spiritual knowledge is always futile. That is the indication of this verse. For such persons, cultivation of the knowledge in the Vedic literature such as Vedanta Sutra and the Upanishads is always baffled. It is a great offense, therefore, to consider Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, to be an ordinary man. Those who do so are certainly deluded because they cannot understand the eternal form of Krishna. The Brihad Vishnu Shriti clearly says, One who considers the body of Krishna to be material should be driven out from all ritualistic activities of the Shruti and Smriti. Anyone, if one by chance sees his face, one should at once take bath in the Ganges to rid himself of the infection. People jeer at Krishna because they are envious of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Their destiny is certain to take birth after birth in the species of atheistic and demoniac life. Perpetually, their real knowledge will remain under delusion, and gradually they will regress to the darkest region of creation. Umagyan timirandasya gena jena salakaya chaksun militam yena tasmai sri gurave namaha shila prabhupad ki jai. So, 
it is understood that those who fall from the spiritual world come to the material world are somehow or other in competition with Krishna. Material world is an expansion of Krishna's energy. Bhumir apanalubayu, kamana buddhye vacha, ahankar itiya me bina prakriti astada. Krishna describes the ingredients that make up this material energy as being his separated energy. And the forms that manifest in the form of these eight energies are the, uh, is the manifestation of this material world. From that manifestation we see another creation and that is when the living entities take these different ingredients and formulate the structures that make up the uh, materialistic society such as houses, cars, and other types of manufactured items. In other words, Krishna is the original source of creation. Brahma takes that source and then makes the material energy in the form of the bodies of the living entities, 8,400,000. And then we, we take that same ingredients and then we formulate our houses and whatever else we make. So, therefore, because we have some creative power by manipulating the material energy, we're in competition with Krishna. We want our creation or our, our attempt to make a, cre a creation in this world to be the supreme object of our, our focus or our enjoyment. And because Krishna is the original source of everything, everything belongs to him because it's understood. Just like if a person paints a painting, so many people may enjoy the, the beauty of the painting and appreciate it. But actually, the the person who painted the picture actually did it for his own pleasure. So Krishna creates everything out of his own energy for his own pleasure. And therefore, everything belongs to him, <laughs> including us, who are manifestations of that material energy in the form of our bodies and our minds, everything that's both gross and subtle. The only thing different from everything in this material world is us, the soul, the spirit being, which is of the same nature as Krishna. But because we are in competition of Krishna, therefore we become envious of Krishna because he's more powerful. <laughs> and therefore the living entities deride Krishna in different ways, as it says here. They find ways to rule out Krishna in their life or to minimize Krishna's position. And therefore they... Uh, you want to sit on the chair? You sure? Because if you're not comfortable, then it's hard to concentrate. You can sit in a chair if you want. Okay. And so in that competition type spirit, then Krishna, and sometimes people actually rule out the existence of Krishna because it becomes too much of a burden on their minds to think that beyond, beyond, above me there is somebody who's controlling everything, where I want to be the controller. Because the idea of becoming the enjoyer uh, must be precluded by, or prefaced by, being the controller. You can't enjoy unless you can control. And so that per those propensities are practically syn synonymous. Thinking how to enjoy at the same time uh, making arrangements for that enjoyment, that's cool. And we are controllers on this, on this level, on a certain way. But the thing is, what we're trying to control doesn't belong to us. <laughs> and that's the problem. So the, the And that same energy which we try to control is uh, being controlled already by a superior controller. So that competition spirit says here that people actually mock Krishna, they deride Krishna, they even and even push him out of reality in terms of their own mental ideas. So Krishna becomes a problem for those who want to enjoy this material world. So therefore they make propagandas against religious principles, against religious people, and uh, go on with their atheistic societies. And they think that the combination of matter is actually the, the, the source of, of uh, development. Just like they say, 
um, when matter combines itself in a certain way under a certain condition, again, then something is formed from that creation. And the principle is true, but actually it doesn't apply because matter is jada. Jada means inert, dead, doesn't function. There has to be a live spiritual entity that moves the matter. And uh, that that means unless there is spirit, matter doesn't move. It just remains in its, what we say, dull state of existence. So, but, but people can't understand the nature of the soul, so they think, because as the body, the different functions of the body are happening, they think these different functions are making creation uh, and development and ultimately annihilation. So it's all based on some kind of misunderstanding of observation. Their observation is also wrong. And therefore, their whole idea, just like they say, well, there was a chunk, and then there was creation, right? And Or sometimes they say there was gases were circulating around the atmosphere, and there was some combustion because of the gases, and everything exploded, and here you are. So we have we we have started a a construction company. It's called the Big Bang Construction Company. So we you just want a house? We can make it for you. It's very easy. You, we just put the nails, the windows, the roof, the tools, everything in one pile, and we take some dynamite and we blow it up, and there's your house. <laughs> Big Bang Construction Company. <laughs> So uh, this is, I mean, that sounds ridiculous, but this is as ridiculous as their theories. <laughs> but because they use high language, and at the same time they have a position in some in society, people believe them. Or they can't figure out anything contrary, so therefore they accept that. So the whole world is deluded by this, these philosophers, scientists, academicians and various people who have some kind of material knowledge. Maya Aparita Jnana, Krishna says, their knowledge has been stolen by illusion. They may have some knowledge, but it, it's wrong. <laughs> you know, you can, you can do a whole mathematical calculation and look, may it look very nice on paper. But if there's just one principle of the of the math that's wrong, the whole calculation's wrong, and therefore it has no value. So the whole premise of their calculation is wrong, is that matter is the source of existence. And based on that, everything they do is wrong. <laughs> so, but we understand that matter cannot move unless there is spirit, just like they say, well, you know, the computer can do many nice things, but we have an ante there, he's working the computer, so he's a live person. <laughs> yes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we agree. <laughs> so there we have an example of a living being who moves matter. Although matter looks like it very much has a lot of animation and color to it, and it looks quite... Phenomenal, just like I remember there was this one. We were into we were in uh, a place called Niagara Falls, Canada. Uh, it's one of the, when we say the wonders of the world, they call it, there's eight wonders of the world and one is the Niagara Falls. And there's two Niagara Falls, one on the U.S. side and one on the Canadian side. And there's just a you know a geographical dividing line between two between them. People go to the Canadian one because it's more powerful. So we went there one day. We were in the Rathiatra in Toronto. So we took a break and drove about two hours to go see Niagara Falls. And I was with a few devotees, and we were watching this most powerful water come. I mean, in hundreds and thousands of gallons just speeding over the top of this mound and then rushing down full force from a very high level. I mean, I mean, 40, 50 feet, 50 feet more, maybe even more. 
down into a big, big lake. And uh, it's to watch it is really amazing. And so uh, we were watching it, and then uh, one lady, she was just nearby, and there was a little boy, her son, who was with her. And he said to his mother, Mother, who made that? So uh, the mother answered, well, that was made by nature. And I heard it, so I talked to my friend who was near me. I said, tell her, no, it's not nature, it's God. <laughs> so he went over and said, uh, my dear madam, it was made by God. <laughs> and she, then she went to her son and said, oh, yes, yes, it was made by God. So yeah, it was so we understand that behind this great phenomena that it bewilders and when we say causes awe and reverence into the minds of people is actually conducted by the as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, by an insignificant spark of my energy. I pervade and support the entire material creation. That's not just this universe, but all the universes collected together are supported by Krishna's insignificant spark. And he doesn't do anything to make it happen. He simply thinks, and the energies automatically manifest themselves to perform, his, his, to fulfill his desires for creation and for the interaction of the energies within creation. As it says in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Maya Dakshena Prakriti, Suyate Sacharacharam Hetunam Anakunteya Jigad Vipar Vipartante That not a blade of grass can move without the sanction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Prabhupada was saying today, I was listening, he was saying, everything in all aspects are controlled by Krishna. You can't even blink your eye, he said unless there's someone to give you that facility. <laughs> there, is a, there is an understanding, or at least a statement, in the Puranas, that every, every part of the body is controlled by a particular deva. And because that deva is working under the direction of the Supreme Lord, your body functions. <laughs> but if there is for some reason Krishna wants to give you some you know, some uh, frozen <laughs> part of your body doesn't move anymore. He can just signal the deva, you know, turn that off. <laughs> and it's turned off. <laughs> so this is an example how much we are actually controlled. We can, we don't really th understand that the control is complete. So when you understand that, you have, two ch you have two choices. You can either surrender to Krishna or surrender to his energy. Surrendering to his energy means to get, get controlled by that energy. And that energy moves in different ways according to uh, its different, uh, uh, what we say, operations, and according to the waves of material energy. So no one can have a stable existence under the laws of material energy. But one who surrenders to Krishna, who is the controller of the material energy, also controls the material energy. So devotees, so we can see devotees can do wonderful things in Krishna consciousness. They can manifest so many wonderful activities. Why? Because, because if Krishna has given him them the facility to manipulate the material energy in order to serve him in different ways. So that's Krishna's, uh, what we say, shakti, or his uh, empowerment. He empowers the devotees because the devotees are surrendered. So he gives an element of his own shakti to the devotee, and that, that element makes the devotee do wonderful things. But the devotee never thinks, I did it, or I have the ability, I've developed the ability. The ability as Prabhupada, we used to always respond when people would glorify Prabhupada for his, um, for his accomplishments in, in spreading Krishna consciousness around the world. He said, I don't know. They call me a great man, but I don't know what I'm great about. <laughs> I, uh, 
I simply have followed the instructions of my spiritual master without changing anything. No addition, no alteration, adulteration, no diminishing. I've, I've, I've presented it as it is according to Guru, Shadow, and Shastra. He said, that is my credit. He says, where other spiritual people, they like to make their own movements, so they take the Shastras or they take, you know, something spiritual and they twist it to make it look interesting and different, which attracts the minds of people who are enamored by such, um, what we say, personalities. So we see even the great souls such as Srila Prabhupada, they give all credit to ultimately to the Lord and to the empowerment coming from the Lord through the spiritual masters like that. But the opposite is being mentioned here, the demonic and atheistic persons. Um, and it says here, although they, they also try for liberation, they also try to enjoy fruit of activities, and also cultivate knowledge, but all these things are lost, defeated, frustrated, because they don't accept the source, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. One time, Prabhupada said to his devotees, uh, do you believe Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead? No, no, he said, how, well, what, how do you believe that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead? And Prabhupada, the devotees were guessing, well, because you said so, Prabhupada. Prabhupada said no. <laughs> because it says that in the Bhagavad Gita, you're getting close. <laughs> so a lot of times devotees don't even accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of God. And they may accept Krishna as a very powerful personality or maybe an expansion, just like it mentions in the... Uh, in the encyclopedias that uh, Krishna is the 14th incarnation of Vishnu. And they say that Vishnu is the source and Krishna is an expansion of that. But all the Shastras is different from that statement. Krishna is two Bhagavan Svayam. Ete cham sham kalom pum sam. Krishna is two Bhagavan Svayam. Uh, what's the other verse? Aham Ari Devanam. Aham Sarvashya Prabhupada. So many verses that Krishna speaks himself, and then though in the, in the actual Shrutis himself in the Vedas, it says, Ishwara Parma Krishna Satchit Ananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karna Karna. So this is very important. Maybe we hear it so many times and we just take it for granted, but when you really fix your mind on this principle that Krishna is the Supreme Personality, that's also fundamentally important, of Godhead, then you can start to understand everything about the process of devotional service and how the Lord is always actively working through his energies and sometimes also directly to make everything happen like that. And his own, therefore, an intelligent person does one thing, surrenders to Krishna, <laughs> because there's no choice. <laughs> You either have to surrender to Krishna or you have to surrender to his Maya energy. <laughs> so you can you can surrender you can be a good citizen and follow the rules of the state, or you can be a good citizen and follow the rules of the jail. <laughs> so you either follow the rules of the jail or you follow the rules of the state. One your freedom and get the privilege of the state, and the other one you're locked up and you your privileges are limited. Both are controlled by the state, as Krishna controls both energies. So in the same way, you know, that's, this is basically our choices, either Krishna or Krishna's energies, like that. Most people choose Krishna's energies because they think they control and they can enjoy these energies. But as it says here, their, their attempts are baffled, defeated. The word baffled is being used. In, in every particular case here. Uh, sometime, one time one devotee posed this question, or actually I don't, I don't know where it came from, but it says that you know, if you come to Krishna consciousness and you give your life 
to devotional service, but the whole thing is false. None of it's true. <laughs> okay, you're ready for this one. And then there's those the people. People will say, "Well, just see, you just wasted your whole life. You just gave yourself to some untruth." But we say, "No, even if it's not truth, it's a lot of fun." <laughs> We're singing, we're dancing, we're eating nice food. And even if it's not true, we had a nice life. <laughs> Where you were just working like an ass, you know, making a few dollars in a, in a factory, to watching television and get drunk and then falling asleep. <laughs> so you're miserable. But even if even Krishna consciousness was not true, we're having fun. <laughs> it's a good argument. <laughs> But it's not true anyway, because Krishna consciousness is the absolute truth, and that can be experienced in the activities of devotional service. <laughs> and there are many devotees have realizations of their relationship with Krishna. It's not a matter of simply accepting philosophy and then living accordingly. Devotees are experiencing the present. For a devotee, Krishna is there every minute. And for Prabhupada said, for those who are advanced, the devotee talks to Krishna all the time and tells him, Krishna asks him, what should I do next or how should I do it or what should I not do? And Krishna says, do this, don't do this, do this, do this. But Krishna is always with you. And the more you become advanced, the more you can connect with Krishna at all times. And therefore, the material energy doesn't touch you. It doesn't touch you unless you somehow foolishly act in the wrong way, and then Krishna still protects you, but you get slapped. <laughs> it's like a mother slapping the child to bring the child back to its sensible activity. But it's not, a, it's not like the materialists who just are getting kicked constantly by material energy. And then they die. Yeah, just like it says in America, there's a bumper sticker. Life sucks and then you die. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bumper sticker people put on their cars, you know. It's, those have some realizations. <laughs> and that's the truth. That's actually it. Because this whole world is meant to make it to, just to kick you hard enough to you wake up to the fact that you can't be happy here, and then you take up spiritual life. That's the whole process. Then the material energy recedes and becomes your support rather than your your boxing partner. <laughs> okay. If by chance any questions are there, you can give them to me tomorrow. <laughs> We got questions? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So, the question is how to judge or balance between saying yes or no to offering help to person? Apart from our capability and ability and time to judge whether to extend help when asked or to judge the person who has asked for it. Or should any of these analyses not come into our mind in the first place? Because such calculations only comes when you have several bad experiences with that particular person. What's the essence of the question? Can you sum it up? How to judge or balance between saying yes or no to offering help to a person if we have bad experiences with them? Oh. You want to offer help to a person you have bad experiences. Well, it depends on the nature of the person, what, what was your previous experience. If this person is going to cause you difficulty or more harm, you may want to help them by directing them to where they can get help rather than getting involved directly. That's one way of helping them referring to them where, the, where you think they might be able to receive the help they need. That way you don't have to get entangled. Um, sometimes we do that, 
But then again, we have to be careful because if someone, again, causes us some distress, that's bad for them. That's bad for them. Although we may be able to tolerate it, it's not good for them because they go down. So sometimes when you're trying to help some people, they become more offensive. So therefore, it mentions not to try to uh, preach not, uh, truth to the, to the faithless. Or try not to help someone. Better to teach people how to help themselves rather than to get directly involved. That's why we, we speak so people can learn and then learn how to, you know, solve their own problems like that. But in some cases, when they can't solve their own problems, or you have to see how sincere that person is. Just like a lot of times, when a person does something wrong, and then you help them, and then they continue to do the same thing wrong over and over again, you get a little bit disgusted with trying to help them because... You know, they don't take it. They just keep making the same mistakes or they don't really take your advice. Jai Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai. So you have to discriminate. I think that the best answer would be to uh, see how you can help a person without getting directly involved. If you know by getting directly involved, it will be difficult for you. Okay. Thank you. I hope that was a little helpful. Do we have anything else? Okay. So, thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. I'm sorry, Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.